Happening now, a missing woman has been found dead. New York State Police leading the investigation. Plus, with the Pen Independence Day weekend starting tonight, local police asking everyone to remain vigilant and stay safe. The latest from our area department. Well, it's a very wet day out there today. We're going to have some more rain out there this afternoon, but the holiday weekend looking better. We'll talk about it next as the news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. A 45-year-old woman from Angola reported missing this week has been found dead. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. New York State Police say the search for Gina Baca started on Tuesday following a report from the Seneca Nation of Indians Marshals. Baca, troopers say, was located deceased yesterday. Since then, a criminal investigation has been launched. The New York State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigation and the Forensic Identification Unit are now working with troopers to investigate the incident. No other details about the case were released. Well, the Jamestown Public School District will be hiring a graphic designer to rework the high school's logo and mascot, discontinuing the use of the J with Feathers branding. This week, the school board approved a resolution officially changing the logo and mascot. However, a motion to change the Red Raider name failed. Last month at this time, the district's mascot committee recommended the school discontinue using the J with Feathers and find a new logo. The committee, reassembled by Superintendent Dr. Kevin Whitaker last year, was tasked with examining the school's mascot imagery used and its nickname. The recent push from summoning the community refueled the effort to rebrand, citing disrespect to Native Americans. Well, law enforcement agencies across Chautauqua County are gearing up for Independence Day weekend with a warning to residents about self-hosted fireworks displays, drinking and driving, and more. WNY News Now's Jason Rutman with what police are addressing. Justin, please say self-hosted fireworks displays, which have been an increasing problem in the city of Jamestown, are illegal in the state of New York. In fact, law enforcement officials say anyone arrested for possessing a firework can face up to one year in prison. Furthermore, the sale of fireworks to a minor is a felony crime. Sparklers, however, are legal and for sale at businesses across the area. Please say when enjoying the small pyrotechnics with family and friends, it's important to monitor children to keep them safe. I spoke with the town of Ellicott Police Chief William Omis about that today. They can be still very dangerous because sparklers are, are very, very hot and people should know that. So again, you would use good judgment and responsibility in using them, uh, especially around children. Um, anything larger is not permitted for sale or use by private persons. Um, and only persons uh, 18 years of age and older may purchase sparkling devices. So, so um, people need to understand that. Aside from fireworks, police are asking drivers to keep a heightened awareness around parks and other large gatherings, as there will be lots of people, especially small children, who may pop out in front of cars without much warning. Additionally, drinking and driving is also a concern, with police reminding people who consume alcohol to plan for a safe ride home. It's just a matter of, please, be responsible. Just just think before you act. Um, so, so again, we can have a... a very safe uh, 4th of July. Finally, with the, oh, sorry. Finally, with the uptick of fireworks expected, pet owners are asked to keep their furry friends on leashes and be aware that dogs may be especially noise sensitive to fireworks. Justin, back to you. All right, Jason, thank you. Now, ultimately, police tell us that if there is an emergency situation in your neighborhood, it's best to call 911. Well, the 4th of July festivities are getting underway across much of the area, including a slew of fireworks displays that launch off tonight. The Jamestown Tarp Skunks are hosting what will be the first display of fireworks in our area. The display will take place following their double header game that starts at 4 o'clock today at Russell Lee Dietrich Jr. Park. Then the firework action heats up tomorrow with displays hosted at George Barillo Park in the village of Silver Creek. 
the Cattaraugus County Fairgrounds in Little Valley, and at Whedon Park in Randolph. Then, on the 4th of July, there will be fireworks displays at the Dunkirk City Pier, Seneca Allegheny Resort and Casino in Salamanca, in the village of Bemis Point, and the village of Mayville's Lakeside Park, too. Most of the shows start at dusk. If we missed any of them, send us an email. We have more details now at WNYNewsNow.com, and we'll update our list. Certainly exciting as a lot of people are gearing up for uh, could be a three-day weekend, some I know four-day weekend out there. Let us know what you guys are doing today in the comments down below. Uh, we always love to hear from you. It's uh, great to see uh, Ricky, good to see uh, Trish, Michael, and Wendy as well. Uh, hopefully you all are having a happy Friday. Well, now let's get to Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter, who's standing by live in studio with more on a first look at our weather. And it's a pretty uh, wet start to that holiday weekend, Dakota. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been pretty soggy throughout the day today, and uh, this is a live look over the uh, Chautauqua Institution, and uh, look at the temperature, 57 degrees, the average high is 80, so it is, I mean, you know, we go from one extreme to another, from hot and humid to raw and cool. Don't you love weather around here? And uh, rainfall so far there is a little less than a, a half an inch, but uh, this is actually what's going on. Rain has been steady across much of the uh, southern tier today, or at least Chautauqua County, because this is what's called a meso low. It's a localized area of uh, low pressure that is set up. We'll talk more about that during the full weather segment, but uh, this is why it's been raining all day today, and we have seen a lot of rain just over the past two days. We'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. 73 is where we topped out yesterday. 55 is where we started the day. 98 and 40 are the record highs and lows. So through the afternoon, scattered to widespread soaking rain, some thunderstorms at times. We actually have a couple of bumbles of thunder uh, here at the studio right now. Uh, the rain will taper west to east today. Cool and raw, 63 to 69 is the best we're going to be able to do because of that north to northeast wind. Now we'll talk about the fireworks coming up on Sunday. Plus us. Yeah, summer returns next week. We'll talk about it with that seven day in a few. Justin? Yeah, just in time for July. Certainly looking forward to that forecast uh, coming up in about 10 minutes time. We'll see you then, Dakota. While you're traveling this holiday, millions of others plan to do so. Britt Conway with some travel experts who are expecting pre-pandemic levels of people on the roads and in the sky. What a difference a year makes. This 4th of July, travel is back with a bang. You don't really appreciate how much you missed it until you get back to doing it again. Flying. The TSA says more than 2 million people went through airport security checkpoints this past Sunday, and it expects to see even more travelers this holiday weekend. Leisure demand is more than 100% recovered. On the roads. AAA expects more than 43 million people to travel by car, more than even before the pandemic. But you'll pay up at the pump. Gas prices are forecast to stay above a $3 average through the summer. People may generally feel a little more comfortable traveling by car. It gives you a little more control over protecting everybody in the family. Because let's not forget, the pandemic isn't over. And the highly contagious Delta variant has spread to all 50 states and D.C. You can still celebrate. If you are vaccinated, you have a high degree of protection. If you are not, you should wear a mask and you should think very seriously about getting vaccinated. Mother Nature will challenge some celebrations too. It's expected to be dry and hot in the West, rainy and muggy in the South and along the East Coast. Not that it's expected to slow down travel much. You're going to have a lot of company on the road and in the skies and around you at all times. Remember, be patient. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Britt, thank you. Well, Southwest Airlines is offering to pay flight attendants double time to pick up shifts over this holiday weekend. Technical problems and bad weather have disrupted their operations in the last couple of weeks. Well, now it's facing possible staffing shortage for the holiday. Southwest made the offer to flight attendants in an internal memo from the airline's head of daily operations. They're hoping attendants will pick up additional shifts between July 1st and the 8th. A spokesman said Southwest will also offer double time pay to ground operation agents and cargo attendants who pick up extra shifts for the first week of July, too. Coming up next, a lot more to tell you about. More details on that partial building collapse in southern Florida and the quickly rising death toll there. 
But first, State Senator George Varello speaks with us about his reasoning of backing a new energy lawsuit that's targeting a state policy. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. With coverage that matters, this is WNY. Located along the Amish Trail, the Randolph Retail Company offers a variety of clothing, jewelry, and gifts for any occasion. Offering uptown merchandise at small town prices, our locally owned business balances quality and value. With complimentary gift wrap here at the Randolph Retail Company, we pride ourselves in personal service. Check out our Facebook page or stop in today at 127 Main Street, Randolph, just a 20 minute drive from Jamestown. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Have the best summer ever with endless adventures at Girl Scout Summer Camp. Financial aid available, open to all girls. For more information, call or go to gswny.org. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. State Senator, who represents the Jamestown area, is backing a new lawsuit that's seeking to overturn what he calls an overreach of the state's environmental regulations here in New York. State Senator George Borello says the suit, filed this week by a coalition of municipalities, community organizations, and conservation groups, seeks to overturn regulations which are aimed at fast-tracking approvals for renewable energy projects, like wind turbine installation efforts, for example, by bypassing local zoning and approval processes and state environmental reviews. Borello says the regulations are politically driven by the governor's office and a violation of the state's constitutional home rule provision, as well as the tenets of New York State's Environmental Equality Act. This is the governor's payoff to all his friends that donate to his campaign, and so that he can pretend somehow that he's the king of climate change. Uh, and he's doing so by industrializing our beautiful uh, rural areas. We're seeing this already. Additionally, he says that rules bypass the state DEC, for allowing the potential destruction of farmland and natural habitats. Well, the Boy Scouts have made an $850 million settlement to offer sexual abuse survivors in a case that could make legal history. The youth organization more than doubled its initial offer to compensate sexually abused Boy Scouts late yesterday. The offer comes more than a year after the nonprofit filed for bankruptcy as it faced hundreds of abuse lawsuits and individual claims. An attorney representing some of the abuse survivors believe the final set settlement could top $1 billion when insurance claims are settled. Although it's a steering amount of money with as many as 82,000 victims, the amount each scout receives might only be $10,000. In addition to the money, Boy Scouts of America will provide access to all internal records related to their abuse. Attorneys say it's now up to the victims who filed the claims to approve the settlement agreement. Well, work resumed in Surfside, Florida on part of the rubble from the collapsed condo that has now been deemed safe. The wreckage holds clues for countless families still waiting for answers. 
18 people have died and 145 are still unaccounted for. Yesterday, President Biden met with some of the families one week after the building crumbled. Nadia Romero with more from Surfside, Florida. They're going through hell. And those who survived the collapse, as well as those who are missing loved ones. President Joe Biden offering condolences to families desperate for any information about their loved ones. It's bad enough to lose somebody. But the hard part, the really hard part, is to not know whether they're surviving or not. We're not giving up hope. With each passing day, as more debris is removed, hope fades. The families are very realistic. They know that the chances are, as each day goes by, diminish slightly. But at a minimum, at a minimum, they want to recover the bodies. Potentially hindering efforts, Tropical Storm Elsa, which could impact Surfside as soon as this weekend. There is a risk of heavy rainfall and strong winds from Elsa on Sunday night into Monday morning. A more immediate concern, the stability of the portion of the building that still stands. For much of the day Thursday, work had to be halted. Given our ongoing safety concerns about the integrity of the building, we're continuing to restrict access to the collapse zone. As crews work to find any signs of life, engineers focus on the condos that haven't crumbled. And we're proceeding with planning for the likely demolition of the building while the search and rescue continues. What we do not want to happen is for it to collapse onto the pile and then we just restart from scratch. That would be the worst. In Surfside, Florida, I'm Nadia Romero. Nadia, thank you. Well, Pinterest says it is the first social media platform to ban all weight loss ads from its site. The announcement comes after growing concern over a jump in eating disorders and young people aggravated by the pandemic. Pinterest says it wants to prohibit ads that promote unhealthy eating habits or discourage certain body types. Despite its reputation as the feel-good corner of the internet, there have been Pinterest pins that promote certain things that are for pro-anorexia or uh, weight loss pills that doctors deem unhealthy. In 2011, the company banned content, but body shaming and eating disorders content kept creeping up, often in forms of advertisements. Well, Pinterest developed the new policy with guidance from the National Eating Disorder Association. Certainly interesting. And uh, yeah, that really is the happiest place on the internet. Let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. It's almost like uh, Pinterest and Instagram, Dakota. We've talked about this before, about how there's not... Yeah, my, my girlfriend, she's big on recipes. Pinterest really gives her a lot of great ideas. I, I don't know anybody who uses it. Yeah, I mean, I don't use it personally myself, but... I've noticed Instagram, it's the same thing. You have a lot of like weather photos, you know, sun, like sunsets and rainbows. Well, you see, Instagram not, not is else. a different place because it's full of happy pictures. Yeah. You don't have to deal the dogs, with the like BS dogs. that's on the face bag. Right. You know, <laughs> Facebook can get a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> Why do you think I call it the face bag? <laughs> uh, it's good to see uh, Deborah. Good to see Robert, uh, Linda and uh, Dan as well. Hopefully you all are having a great day. Um, glad that uh, it's not too crazy in our comment section. We try our best, you know, we just want everyone to be nice to each other. Mm. I mean, how hard is it really? It's pretty hard, I guess. Um, one thing that- uh, I have an opinion, but we all know this will be a garage tomorrow, so I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> it probably wouldn't be a garage, but I'd still be here, right? Maybe. Well, yeah. All right. Uh, switching gears. I want to take a look outside if we can. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we were going to show this before we got to full, full weather. Um, it's pretty wet out there. And yep. actually, Dakota, just before the break, right before we came back, there was thunder that that actually rocked the studio. Like, did you feel it? I felt it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a nice little and, you know, it's interesting how, you know, sometimes when you're in a studio, you really don't you know, see it or hear it, especially on the uh, live. But uh, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting to be sitting in a studio and then like the rafters right. start. We don't have a shaking. ton of thunder. Yeah, you can hear the rain yeah. on the roof. We don't have a ton of thunderstorms. I've noticed like we've been spared mm -hmm. a lot of times, but not today. Not today. No, and, uh, especially and another not person who's not getting spared is Ella. Do we all know Ella, the pink elephant in Portland? Sean Sweatman sent us this picture actually on his Facebook page. And of course, we all know Sean pilots the storm interceptor for us. Her little footsies are getting wet. Aww. 
But uh, yeah, it's definitely a wet day out there. If you have any pictures or videos of the weather, Hunter's WX on Twitter, the First Defense Weather page on Facebook, and use that hashtag, MyLocalWX. And have you noticed, it's been wet around here. 1.52 inches of rain yesterday, combined to 1.53 we've had so far today as of noon hour. It's still raining, so this total is gonna go up by the end of the day. That makes our two-day rain total so far for June, 3.05 inches. The average for the month on the second day of June is around half an inch. <laughs> so it's been a very wet couple of days here to start June. And you'll see it here on First Defense Doppler. All this rain is continuing across the southern tier. Also those lightning strikes uh, popping up as well at times. And as we put it in a time lapse, you'll be able to see what we were talking about earlier. Notice how it's all spinning counterclockwise. This is called a meso low. It's a very uh, small area of a localized low pressure that has set up. And as we zoom it out, you'll actually see it better. Cold front has moved on through. See this little swirl right here, right over the Southern tier? That's the meso low that has developed. And meso lows usually develop because of another system. We're behind the cold front, so that's why it is set up. And there's that look from, the, from on top of the Doubletree Hotel. Right now we're at 54 as of noon hour. The average is 80, by the way. Northeast wind of eight, that's keeping us cool. So we have a wind chill number of 52 out there, a measly 52 degrees. So here's the newest run of future scan. Shows you those showers and thunderstorms through the afternoon. They'll start to pull away from west to east later on this afternoon. So expect the rain to be tapering off later in the day. Not guaranteed that the tarps are still gonna be able to get their double header in because I think the ground conditions might be too soggy along with some of the rain, but we'll hope on the drier side of things. We'll hope they'll be able to get it in. Tonight, the rain should taper off overnight. Tomorrow will be a better day. Turns a little bit warmer as well, but notice how there is a couple scattered showers popping up here. Again, wouldn't rule that out through the afternoon hours tomorrow. And then Sunday for Independence Day itself, Oh, gorgeous, partly to mostly sunny, warmer, and just a tad bit humid. Speaking of those fireworks, let's show you the updated forecast for uh, the uh, Lakeside Park fireworks. No change in this forecast, 68 down to 65. Of course, the fireworks start at 10 p.m. there. And also at Whedon Park in Randolph, adjustment to the forecast. We think it's going to be a little bit cooler now, 66 down to 62. That's also at 10 o'clock at Whedon Park in Randolph. So inland areas today, yeah, it, Summer is not here. J July is dazed and confused. 64 will likely do it uh, for the city today, and especially when you get into Ellicottville. You may struggle to hit the 60 degree mark. The next seven days of your life are on the screen. 72 tomorrow, an improving weather day. 80 on Sunday for the 4th of July. Nice, partly to mostly sunny. And the humidity returns big old time as we go into early next week, steamy Monday. And then we bring in those scattered afternoon showers and storms through the middle of next week. We'll take a break, be right back. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at OneBall4TC.com. Something more than a birthday is happening here. Once you can see it, you can help. The sooner you recognize the signs of autism, the sooner you can make a lifetime of difference for your child. <laughs> Start by answering a few simple questions at screenforautism.org. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Welcome back to WNY News Now. In an effort to help our furry friends find a forever home, we're partnering with the Chautauqua County Humane Society in my favorite segment, the Pet of the Week. Joining us live is Amanda Sublet to talk more about this week's featured furry friends. And by the looks at the monitor, Amanda, you got uh, quite a group. I have a lot of friends here today. <laughs> um, this guy right here, this is Buzz. 
Then we have the brothers Fine and Dandy. And then I have Melon over here in my arms. He's purring away. These guys are approximately two, three months old. Everybody is looking for their forever home. But I wanted to talk to you about that journey before they get there. All of these guys started out by going through our foster care system. They didn't come in at an appropriate age to be ready to go into their forever home or to have their surgery or some of that medical care done. So they start out by getting to be socialized and play all the time in a foster home where they get loved and they might be medicated if they're sick. They learn how to be a cat and then they'll get to come back here when they're ready for their spay and neuter surgery. Once that's done, they get ready for available for adoption. Wow. And we talked on this program uh, previously about just how much work really does go into trying to foster some of these relationships with the animal, animal to animal, animal to people, and having positive experiences. Uh, for young kittens especially, I imagine they're super impressionable. Um, the success rate of, of having them in foster care and, and building those relationships, it seems like that probably impacts the rest of their life. It really does. It's incredibly important for a kitten. By the time they are seven weeks of age, if they are not properly socialized with people, they are feral and it is almost impossible to reverse. You might get a very shy cat who can live in the home, but they're not going to be that social kitten that you're expecting. So seven weeks is not a lot of time to have that impact on them. So we're truly grateful for our fosters and the opportunity to be able to do this. We're always looking for new fosters. I don't know anybody who would not love playing with a bunch of kittens. But we're always needing help with our dogs as well. Some cats who are currently available for adoption might need a little extra chance for socialization. Uh, whether it just be to come out of that shell in an environment that's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, sometimes medical or behavioral treatment, just a little bit of time can make all the difference. So what would make a good foster, Amanda? Is there a, a certain set of uh, requirements that, that you're looking for for someone's home or, or lifestyle? Honestly, it's just a little bit of time and love. If you think you can adopt to have a pet as your own personal pet, it's the same for fostering. You can easily accommodate them. You just have to be willing to open up a little space in your house and a little time to give them the care that they need. Sometimes we foster family, we keep the fosters that we we fell in love with. I know that one well too well. <laughs> but other times we give them back and we take another group in a couple of days, whenever there's a need. <laughs> Absolutely. So if there's a, a group, maybe a family out there who says, yeah, we want to give it a shot. What's the best way they can do it? I imagine uh, giving you guys a call. Yep, yeah, and we do have our foster application on our website, so that's a great place to start because once we get that, we give you guys a call and get started on the process. It tells Absolutely. us right there on that application whether you're interested in cats, kittens, puppies, dogs, anything that you can think of. Um, we also look for fosters for our rabbits that we have at times. So anything you're interested in fostering is always going to be a huge help. Yeah, and, and again, your, your group, uh, you know, really relies a lot on these volunteers. And, and I think what a better time to, to get uh, connected with that. Um, so again, chqhumane.org is the website to, to go check out. Um, and uh, you can see that foster information. And uh, Amanda, are, are these guys ready for adoption yet? If somebody's out there All looking for kids? guys in here are ready. A uh, couple of them just came back from foster and had their surgery. So they're just looking for their forever homes now. Yeah, and there's a great, great page on there, Adoptable Animals and the Cat Section. Oh, gosh, well, how could you not fall in love? You need a, a Thunder Buddy today, that's for sure. And uh, it looks like they're these great guys are <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're ready for it. So, Amanda, thank you so much. Uh, again, I hope you, Brian, and, and all the, the animals there at the, the Humane Society have a great 4th of July holiday. We'll see you guys back here next week. Thank you, you too. Awesome. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Of course, news continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com um, and on our mobile app. A programming note for everyone. We are back here Tuesday um, following the 4th of July. So we'll see you 
there at noon. But of course, news does continue 24-7 at our website and mobile app. We'll leave you with this live look over Lakewood and uh, the folks there driving along Fairmount Avenue. Have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy time with friends and family and stay safe.